stand and turn to number 881, the Apostles' Creed, as we read together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sing number 733, Marching to Zion. Number 733.
privacy. Good morning. Lectionary reading today is Luke 10, uh, chat verses 25 through 37. You can follow along on the screen or in your pew Bible. Uh, the parable of the Good Samaritan. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite. And when he came to the place and saw him passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and we saw him. He was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having him, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him. And when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell in the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Those are the words of God for the people of God. God is good. All the time. And all the time. This morning for announcements, our Sunday school is at 10 a.m. on Sundays, and morning worship is at 11. Wednesday night Bible study is at 6 p.m. with pizza and fellowship at 5.30. We thank all the ladies that brought things Wednesday night. We didn't have pizza. We had a, a plethora of things. And it was quite delicious and was good the next day for lunch and supper. VBS. All children of Salem have been invited to participate in the VS, VBS program with Pikeville's First United Methodist Church, July 12th through the 13th at 5.30. If you need more information, there's a number for you to call. This morning, we want to wish happy birthday to Leslie Anderson and Lisa Sizemore. They're not with us today, but we want them to know their church loves them and wishes them a happy birthday. Any other announcements? On our prayer list this morning, we want to remember Stevie Joe Litz. He is having a procedure tomorrow to try to get some relief in his back. He's in horrible, terrible pain, and we just pray he gets that relief. We want to remember Ricky Maynard's friend Donnie, the Floyd County Sheriff John Hunt and his staff, the Prestonsburg Police Chief Randy Woods and his staff, the family of Timmy Adkins. Any other prayer requests this morning? Sarah Chaffins will have her surgery Tuesday. How's Laura Adams? She got uh, out of the hospital. She's done, she done well with the surgery. She's doing good. I want to continue to remember Laura Adams. Oh, okay. So I'd like to ask her for Sadie Bacon. She is a recent job screen graduate. I want to remember Sadie Weddington, in case you didn't hear that. Very sick little girl going to be a freshman at Pike Central this year. Uh, Ernest Campbell, family Christian Campbell. Probably a lot of people know Ernest in some ways. He was a kid in the county with the Prestonsburg. He just passed away yesterday. Remember the Campbell family in Prestonsburg. Kristen is the one that makes 
those lovely cream horns at moments if you ever heard those from Anything else? Continue to remember Stella's niece, Larissa, and uh, her, for her healing and for her heart. We just pray you bless it. Continue to remember Jonathan Ford as he has more testing this week. If nothing else, we'll ask our pastor to come lead us in prayer. Prayer today, and God remembers those that have unspecial, uh, that have unspoken prayer requests today as well. Lift your hands if you'd like. God bless you. Let's pray. Lord, we give thanks today for God in our life, for being able to pray for one another. for the hope which is being given to us. The hope that goes not only in this life, but even far beyond. God, we want to pray for those that have lifted prayer this morning by spoken requests, unspoken requests. Those that are listening in by way of the internet. Uh, we, we continue to pray for Stevie Joe and upcoming procedures that may be uh, for him with his back, just the suffering and struggle that he's had with that. We pray for healing. We pray for Sarah and David, Lord, as they get ready for this drive to Lexington and the surgery on Tuesday. We pray for your blessings, that you would guide the surgeon's hand, and that healing would be complete and speedy recovery. We continue to pray for Larissa and these uh, problems that she's had, Lord, and, and we're thankful that she was able to to come home and we just pray for her recovery. We pray for all of those here today and those that aren't able to be here and we pray your will be done today in our community and in our church, the United Methodist Church and Lord, the Universal Church. We pray for those that are still mourning and still trying to pick up the pieces after this terrible tragedy. Their families that are left behind. And God, we just pray that you would have your way and bless them, God. And we pray, Lord, as you taught us to pray, Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespass as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right. So, uh, we uh, mentioned uh, this is uh, a fifth Sunday month, I believe, July, right? All right. And uh, so we will have just July to kind of give as what, 31st? July 31st. 31st will be our fifth Sunday. Uh, so we want to uh, remember that today. And uh, the, uh, thank you for the offering that was in the offering of $1,300 last week. May the Lord bless you. And is somebody doing the doxology? Oh. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. If you like, just stand while we do our doxology. <laughs>
let's see here. Uh, who would Richie? Are you, you back there? Would you say the prayer for today? Dear God, we come to your ministry. We do want to thank you for this day. We want to thank you for the opportunity to be back in your house. God, as we go forth in this service, I just pray that your word will be spoken. And as it goes out, amongst your people, God, I believe and I pray that your blessings will be upon it. And we can all have a blessing to say that it's just been a good place to be. God, as we go through this life, we know that we all fall short each day. I just pray that. We can be found coming back to you and ask for that forgiving grace that when it comes time for us to leave this earth, that we can have a hope of a better place to go. God, as we present this offering to this church in your name, I pray that you bless it and it would bring a blessing to those and to those missions that we sponsor that the help that we give, that they can receive it. Know that it comes from the heart of our people. God again, just bless us in this service. Bless us through this day, is my prayer. Which you know I prefer. Amen. You may be seated, and as Rome gets ready to read the scripture, I, uh, you will notice I had in there a, a part for laity. Uh, and uh, I had asked Chris that when he uh, can to do a. Uh, just say a few words of whatever the Lord lays on the heart. And they're not here today, but if someone asks a praise, uh, something you want to be thankful for, or something that you just want to thank God for, you'd like to share with us real quick, uh, we'd love to give you the opportunity to do that. It's always good to hear, hear those things. Anyone at all? All right. It's wrong. The scripture text is <clears throat> taken from Colossians, first chapter. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers and sisters in Christ in Coloss, grace to you and peace from God our Father. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel, that has come to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from, day, from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. This you learn from Ephyrus, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and he has made known to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understandings, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from His glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints and the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray. Father, we pray that we might be found to be a faithful church that we might grow in wisdom and compassion and love for our neighbors. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before we begin, I want to share uh, just, uh, you know, just some good news, uh, I think, for me. Uh, and, you know, we talked about the fact that we, we share each other's joys and sorrows. And uh, I uh, volunteered to serve on the endorsement committee for the United Methodist Church, which is a uh, committee, it's a national board that uh, interviews and endorses people who are uh, going into ministry, especially uh, auxiliary ministries like chaplaincy and things. And uh, I had to go to Nashville to do that, and now they're doing it online. <laughs> but uh, so much better, but uh, so I have been, uh, accepted to volunteer as 
um, a, an endorser, a part of that committee, and that will be coming up July the 26th, and desire your prayers for that. And as I said, I can, we can do it online, but it's just a privilege. Uh, I know what it was like to sit in that seat and go before a committee, and they were gracious to me, and we hope to be the same with them. So I desire your prayers, and I just wanted to share that uh, blessing with you. It was getting hotter. That's what Frank May noticed at, at sunrise. As he looked out the window of his apartment in India, and taking a deep breath, he felt like he was in a sauna. Let me read that to you. He was thirsty, and the jug by his bedside was empty. All over town, the stress hum of window box air conditioners, uh, fans, buzzed like giant mosquitoes. Wells of dismay cut the air coming from the rooftop across the street. The next day, the temperature rose to 107 and the humidity to 60%. People were dying all over the place. Frank walked with a group of neighbors to the lake and found a desperate scene. There were many, many people in the lake. Heads dotted the surface everywhere around the shores. It just felt better. They could sit on the shallowest part of the lake bottom, heads out of the water, and try to endure. Frank shut his eyes, fully immersed in the shallows. The night dragged on, feeling like years. And in the morning, he stirred, and gradually he come up from the water. Balancing his head carefully on his spine, he surveyed the scene. Everyone was dead. This gruesome scene is from the first chapter in Kim Stanley Robinson's novel, The, Mystery, uh, the Ministry for the Future. Uh, in it, uh, aid worker Frank May just barely survives a brutal Indian heat wave, one of which, uh, if the experts, scientific experts are right, uh, there will be many to afflict our planet in years to come. And the book goes on to talk about uh, some of the innovative ways that they combated that and was able to come uh, against that. And it really uh, kind of takes a political turn here and uh, you know, talk about climate change. Uh, we may not all agree on climate change, as uh, most of us agree that there is some of that going on, uh, of course, but uh, the, the part that gets really debatable is, is the cause and the solution, and, and there doesn't seem to be a good uh, consensus in our country and in our world. But I think we can all agree that we, could, we should consider not only our present world, those that are around us now, but those that will come after us. That we should continue to look toward the future and try our best to provide a better future for those that will follow us. We know we've not always been good stewards of God's environment. When we come to this country, we nearly wiped out all the buffalo and many of the other animals and the trees, and, and we just weren't very wise in the way we took care of things. The book is called A Ministry for the Future. And I think that's a fascinating concept. A ministry for the future. Really, I think that's what we're supposed to be about. That we're not only looking at today, but we're looking at the future. We have an eye on the future. And that's what the Apostle Paul was doing. He had a ministry for the future. And he had people in mind that would come after them. And we see he kind of had a vision in Colossians. And as uh, the reading was done this morning, I want to uh, particularly mention verse 9 and 10 there. He says, For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, reading from the New King, King James, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, pl fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. In this passage, the Apostle Paul is not just talking about the good old days. And reflecting on days gone by when things were so much better than they were today. 
He is not just contemplating uh, the past, but he's looking at the future ahead. He's concerned about a ministry for the future. And he has his eyes towards the needs for people tomorrow. So he is, you know, based on a conviction that decisions made today will affect people tomorrow. I'll say that again. The decisions we make today will have a great impact on others tomorrow, including ourselves. But even after we're gone, some of the decisions that we make, good or bad, will have an impact on people tomorrow. And so there may become a time when we are not around and, and we may not be sitting in these pews and in this church, or maybe somebody else will, but we have a responsibility for those tomorrow. During the uh, last few weeks with the officers uh, killed and, and injured, it was, it was really a terrible, terrible time in our community. And my, many of us have felt the brunt of that, especially those in Prestonsburg and the funerals that were held afterwards. But as in any tragedy, there, there are those stories that come out of it that are beautiful stories. And I want to share one with you. Uh, recently, uh, one of those officers, Officer Chaffins, was killed, and he has a six-year-old daughter. Officer Chaffins is a Christian, and his pastor is actually the chief of police in Prestonburg, Randy Woods. And Officer Chaffin's six-year-old daughter come up to him one day and said to him, Dad, I want to be baptized. I'd like to be baptized. And so Officer Chaffin's, along with his pastor, the chief of police, baptized this little girl, this little six-year-old girl. And this was three weeks before he left this world. And the thing is, what you understand that what he was doing is he, he was creating a ministry for the future. He was thinking about ahead, and even though he's no longer here, he, he did something that will have an impact for the rest of her life. And I think that's really what we're to be about. Creating this ministry, looking toward the future and thinking about those that will come after us. So where do we begin to even do something like this? Where do we start? Well, verse 9 tells us where to start. He said, do not cease to pray that, and ask that you be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So first of all, we start there. We start with prayer and we start... Uh, with the, being filled with the knowledge of God's will. Paul was writing this passage, this book to people who were in the city of Colossae. It was a major roadway and it was what is modern day Turkey. And in that city they had developed as many metropolitan cities would many different beliefs and philosophies and all kinds of mixed uh, things going on there. And the Colossians were familiar with Greek and Roman philosophy and one of those particular philosophy that they were probably influenced by is, and, and let me see if I can get this word right here, is Neopythagoreanism. Say that again, Neopythagoreanism. Well, that's a real tongue twister there. But this is a, a kind of an Hellenistic philosophy that, that many of them would have uh, been familiar with. And they were embroiled in, in fierce debates and, and all these different ideas that were coming out at them. And not that much different than people today with all the different political and social and uh, religious differences that we have today, even in our own denomination. But Paul prays that they may be filled with the knowledge of God's will. And this is not just practical, uh, not just, uh, uh, you know, philosophical knowledge. It's practical knowledge. It's not just, you know, <clears throat> theology. 
but it's knowledge of God. You see, theology is really the study of, of, of the Scriptures and of God. And I remember, uh, you know, when I first went to Bible college and I was exposed to, you know, three years of systematic theology. And I, I just couldn't get enough. I, I loved it, but, but I didn't realize as much then as I do now that the purpose of learning theology is not to puff us up. As you know, some of us young uh, preachers come out of uh, Bible college could not wait to share our vast amount of knowledge that we thought we had. But the purpose of theology is to make us closer to God, to get us more aware of God's will and God's ways and God's love for us. And if our theology doesn't do that, then it's not really doing us much good, is it? The wisdom that Paul is talking about, to be filled with the knowledge of God's will, is the ability to choose the right conduct and the right kind of life. In other words, that we learn how to walk the walk and not just talk the talk. That we honor our marriage commitments and our family concerns. That we see people in the, the image of God in people that may have a different point of view than we might. That's the kind of ministry that Paul says that will make a better future for all of us. Following a ministry for the future. So where do we go? Where do we go from here? We're in this mess of uh, life uh, and all these divisive things that we have today. And you know, political divisions. Where do we go from here? Well, verse 10 tells us this, that you may walk worthy of the Lord. This is where we go. Fully pleasing Him. Being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Walking worthily of the Lord. Fully pleasing Him. Being fruitful in every good work. That we might be productive. That we want to strive to live closer to God and to walk in the Lord's will with our lives. And that's kind of described over in uh, chapter 3 of this same book. Verse 12 through 14. He says over there, Therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, not, uh, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so also must you do. But above all these things, above all, the most important thing, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And so really what he's talking about there is creating this ministry for the future. Learning how to have the love, the compassion, the forgiveness for one another as Christ would have us to and as Christ showed us. In the book, The Ministry for the Future, a friend of the character Frank May shows these qualities. Frank is dying in Switzerland, near where his friend was working. So she visits him in the hospital. And it says that she realized that she believed, as much as she believed anything, that when someone is dying, it wasn't right that they be left alone, stuck in a bed, attended only sporadically by nurses and doctors. That wasn't proper. It wasn't human. It should never happen. And so this friend turned Frank's room into her office and she stayed with him doing her work while playing jazz on a music box day after day after day. That's ministry right there. Ministry for the future. And 1 Corinthians 12, 27 tells us that we are the body of Christ. We are the body of of Christ. And the body of Christ is not contained to these four walls. The body of Christ is meant to go out into all the world. As 16th century mystic 
Teresa of Avila said, Christ has no body but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which He looks, compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which He walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which He blesses all the world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes, yours are His body. Christ has no body now but yours. Imagine yourself ten years from now looking for a church. And you go into a church and you don't know what kind of church it is. Maybe you don't know what kind of music, whether it's contemporary or traditional. You don't know what style it may be. But as you walk in the door, you're immediately met by someone who shows you kindness and compassion. And people come around you and immediately you feel at home. I imagine that's the kind of church you'd want to come back to. And that's the kind of church that God would have us be today. Not just in this building, but out in the world where others see us on Sunday mornings, Sunday afternoons, when we're at the restaurant and maybe we didn't get waited on as quick as we should have. Or maybe the food isn't as perfect as we like it. How we treat other people will reflect on what people think about Christ. Because we are representing Christ in everything we do. We talk about a ministry for the future. It begins right here, right now, today. Let's pray as the musicians come. Lord, today we're thankful that we are reminded in scriptures how that we are the body of Christ. And Lord, we are uh, so many times uh, a poor representation. Help us, Lord, to, to strive to do a better job that we might know God's will, follow that, and seek to love and cherish one another. And even, Lord, when, when there's disagreements or things our brothers and sisters may do that hurt us, may we find the same compassion that Jesus had when He would walk this earth and when He died on the cross. We pray Your will be done in our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Let us stand as we sing number 402, Lord, I want to be a Christian, number 402.
the benediction, hear the benediction today. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the God that breathed life into creation be your delight. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Let's sing the first verse of number 664, sent forth by God's blessing.